All right, so in lecture four here, we're going to walk you through the levels of the respiratory tree. We'll start you out at the beginning. So air is breathed in through the mouth and nose. So if we draw a side view here of someone, we have here, and then we have their mouth open like this, and their neck looking like this. And so the air comes in through the mouth, and so you have like the oral cavity in here. And then it can come in through the nose as well, so the nasal cavity. And then the oral and the nasal cavity uh, terminate into an uh, area called the pharynx, which is right here. So it enters the pharynx, which is right here. And we'll go into more detail on this in the head and neck lecture, but this is to give you an idea. So the pharynx then splits into the larynx anteriorly. So here's the larynx and then the esophagus posteriorly. Okay. And this is the point where you know the food and the air separate. So the food goes down with the esophagus. The, lar the air goes down with the larynx, and you've heard of, you know, if you swallow down the wrong pipe, what that means is you've, you know, swallowed your, f your drink down your, down your larynx into your trachea versus down into your esophagus, and that's what obviously causes you to start coughing and everything. So, air comes in through the oral cavity or the nasal cavity, goes in the pharynx, enters into the larynx, and then the larynx terminates into what's called the trachea, which is shown here. So, here's the Here's the terminal portion of the larynx here, and then this is the laryngeal cartilage. And then here's the trachea here, and it continues um, beginning at the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage, which is shown here. And then, that, and then it terminates down here at the level of the lungs into the right and left main bronchi. So the trachea is a hollow tube, and it serves as the conduit for air going from the larynx to the respiratory tree of the lungs. And as, as you notice here in the structures, it has these uh, several several spaced highland cartilage rings. So each of these is a ring of cartilage, and their their uh, objective is to maintain the patency of the trachea. Because you do not want the if the if the trachea closes, then you're going to lose airflow. So the purpose of the of the rings of cartilage is to keep the trachea open to maintain airflow. And they're C-shaped, so they're open posteriorly. So if we look at like a cross section of the trachea like this, so if this is the round tube, the cartilage is actually like this. So in posterior anteriorly. So the car the cartilage only it's like a C-shape. It only goes down goes around so far, and it's open posteriorly. At the level of the sternal angle which is where the manubrium joins the body of the sternum, the trachea bifurcates into the two main stem bronchi, and you can see that right here. Here's the, here's the right main bronchi, and then here's the left main bronchi, and then those are what go into the lungs. So the carina is a, is a ridge of cartilage at the bifurcation of the trachea, so this is a cutaway of the trachea. Here's one of those cartilage rings. And here's the carina right here, okay? And it's a, it, there's a mucous membrane that covers the carina, and it's actually the most sensitive area of the trachea and the larynx. And, it's, and because of that, it's, can, it can be used clinically to trigger the cough reflex. On endoscopic examination of the trachea, so if you, what that means is if you stick a, a long, flexible camera down the person's, into the person's mouth and then down into the, into the trachea, down into the carina level, if the carina region appear, appears to be widened or protruding, so if this is you know, wider like this, or if it's bulging out like this, it can be actually be an indication of lung cancer because there's lymph nodes just uh, deep to this carina in this area here at the split of the trachea. And what it can be an indication of is that there's a lung cancer that is metastasized to these lymph nodes around the trachea. So that's an important clinical tie-in and clinical use of the carina. Very, very common is the endotracheal intubation, which is if someone undergoes general anesthesia, that's how uh, their breathing is maintained while they're put to sleep. And so it involves placing a, a breathing tube through the mouth and into the trachea to provide air to patients undergoing surgery. Or if someone's in severe respiratory distress and they can't, you're worried about them being able to breathe on their own, then you can uh, do intubation to help them breathe. So what that involves is, is you stick the tube in the mouth like this, you thread it down into the pharynx, into the larynx, and then down into the trachea, and all the way down into the lungs here, to prov uh, at the right just before the lungs to provide air to both lungs. So the main, br uh, the right main bronchus is actually shorter and wider, and you can see that here. Um, it's it's why it has a larger diameter, and then it's also shorter. So it's only from here to here versus this. And if you look at the angle, um, it's actually a more vertical angle. If you draw the angle here between this and this. 
And because of that, since it's wider, it has a, it's a more vertical angle and it's shorter it aspiration. If you aspirate something, which means that it goes down again, it goes down the wrong pipe, uh, goes down the trachea or into the larynx, into the trachea versus going into the esophagus. Uh, if you're in the upright position, if you aspirate in the upright position, it's more likely to go into the right lung than the left because of these features of the right versus left main bronchus. Now, the right main bronchus, it's actually inferior to the arch of the ozygous vein emptying to the SVC. So the ozygous vein is a vein that go, runs up the uh, anterior aspect of the vertebral column in the thorax, and then it'll arch over the right main bronchus like this, and then empty into the SVC, superior vena cava, which is coming down this way. And then as you can see here, uh, so here's the right main bronchus, and then here's the uh, low bar or secondary bronchi, primary you know, or main, secondary low bar. And they're called the low bar because there's a superior, there's a middle, and an inferior low bar bronchi, so one for each of the three lobes of the right lung. Then you have the left main bronchus. This course is inferior to the arch of the aorta in its proximal region. So you have the aorta coming off, because remember the heart's in here as well. The aorta comes off the heart, and it's uh, arching over like this. So it's just inferior to that proximal region. Then you also have the, pul uh, the pulmonary artery, which is more distal, which is uh, superior to it here. So this would be your PA. So it, it travels inferior to both those vessels. And then it travels anterior to the esophagus and the thoracic aorta. So the aorta arch is like this, and then it comes down, and it's also called the descending aorta. And so it's traveling be below or behind, posterior to the main bronchus. And then also the esophagus would be, the esophagus is really posterior to the trachea all the way, and then at this region it's posterior to the left main bronchus. A left main bronchus divides into two lobar bronchi or secondary bronchi. Two versus three in the right because this the left lung only has two lobes versus three in the right. And the reason for that is because the heart is kind of rotated into the left lung. So there's only two lobes. So it has an upper and a lower lobar bronchi, one for each of the two lobes. So after the lobar bronchi, you have the segmental bronchi. And the segmental bronchi go into, you know, within each lobe of the lung, there's segments. And so you get into the segmental bro uh, bronchi here, and then eventually... The way these trees terminate is they terminate into the alveoli, which are these uh, air-filled sacs, and this is where your uh, gas exchange will, will occur. So the air, you know, reaches into this point. These, you know, these sacs expand and collapse, and you have the pulmonary capillaries, which are carrying blood from, you know, deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart to take part here in gas exchange. So this is where, you know. Uh, O2 is picked up and then CO2 is deposited for release and so that's the the terminal portion of the respiratory tree and that concludes our discussion of the respiratory tree now we're going to talk about the pleura